Hey guys, Gary J again, and here's another one of my favorite pistols, and this is another Dan Wesson pistol. And this is a 44 Magnum Dan Wesson. 44 Magnum Dan Wesson. I have a few videos on the Dan Wesson pistols, and one of the things I, I remind you that Dan Wesson is not associated with Smith and Wesson. Uh, Smith and Wesson was created by Daniel B. Wesson and Horace Smith. Uh, that became Smith and Wesson. Now, the Dan Wesson, uh, Dan Wesson came along maybe about 100 years later. He was known as Daniel B. Wesson II. He was kin to Daniel Wesson of Smith and Wesson. And uh, he worked for Smith and Wesson for a few years and decided to create his own company. And so, therefore, he uh, designed the Dan Wesson pistol, rifles, and shotguns. Uh, Carl Lewis played a major role in the design of these Dan Wesson interchangeable barrels. If you look at the other videos I have on Dan Wesson, you see you can get barrels from like 2.5 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch, 12 inch barrels, uh, even up to 15 inch barrels for the Dan Wesson series, which came out about 1970. They started making the Dan Wesson, and uh, they came up finally with a beautiful aesthetic design like this one right here. This is just a beautiful aesthetic design here. A lot of different functions and ideas went into the creation of this Dan Wesson here. And um, one of the things that you see automatically when you see a Dan Wesson pistol, and this is like the baseline. This is not the premier grade uh, type of Dan Wesson generally. This is the way they came. They came with an exceptional bluing job on them. This is a dark, rich, presentation gray type bluing. I mean, it's just an absolutely beautiful bluing. You won't find any any pistol or rifle with a better bluing job than Dan Wesson. And Dan Wesson always put beautiful pistol grips on his pistols as well. Um, and I think that's one of the things that always set his pistols out from a lot of other people. Another thing, too, he had the, the mindset that he wanted to build a pistol that was going to be the best pistol you could possibly buy. And a lot of people think that, that, that he may have done that. Just looking at his design here and his pistol, the few things that come to mind right off the bat is, he has a, a latch right here in front of the cylinder. Most all revolvers have a latch back here to release the cylinder. But this one, you just pull it down and it comes open. And of course, it's empty. So, that's a unique function there. He has a ventilated rib on the top of the barrel as well. And this is a flat black finish so it doesn't reflect sunlight to get in your eyes. And he has the front sight here with a little screw that's inside this little hole right here. It's kind of difficult for you to see probably. But you can, you can um, move that screw a little bit, unscrew it a little bit, and this uh, front sight will come off. And you have a choice of... These other sights, red, white, yellow, and a steel silhouette type sight. And so you can use these right here as well. And depending on the sunlight and the way it's hitting the gun, it makes a difference on how you're shooting, uh, able to see your sights. So interchangeable sights on the front, and it has a locking lug right here. And uh, this locking lug right here holds what we call the shroud. This is a hollow piece right here that slides off. And inside on, on the inside of this is the barrel. This is the barrel here. But this outside comes off kind of like a skeleton. This lug up here, you tighten that down. It pushes the shroud down against the frame. And... Uh, that therefore, therefore securing the shroud and secures the barrel at the top. And as the barrel is screwed into the frame here, it holds that in place too. 
Another thing with Dan Wesson is that uh, you can screw your barrel in all the way to the cylinder and then unscrew it a little bit and use a shim like this shim here is um, uh, six thousandths of an inch shim and you put that shim in here between the cylinder and the cone as you screw the barrel down and the reason that you do that is the closer you have the cone of the barrel against the cylinder the less gases escape out of here when you shoot the gun because on all revolvers flames will come out here you can't see it in the daylight but flames will shoot out a long ways on each side of the gun and you lose power to that cartridge that you're shooting so by having the cone of the barrel six thousandths of an inch or ten thousandths of an inch however you want to adjust that to the cylinder then you have um, a pistol that's going to have more power in that cartridge than a normal uh, pistol and you have an increased accuracy generally too with the barrel being uh, uh, locked into the frame here and locked here with a lug and this particular barrel here has a heavy piece of steel that's mounted to this right here that gives it a lot more weight because this is the 44 magnum and um, Got a nice trigger, a great trigger pull on it, a great uh, a hammer here that you can grab hold of, and beautiful zebra grips on this too. And another thing is they have a bolt in here that's real, real easy to take out, and that's a great idea right here because you don't have a bolt here or a screw here that kind of takes away from the beauty of the wood here. And all of his pistols had beautiful grips, beautiful bluing, just a really elegant, beautiful design. These are easy to take apart. The, back here, you even have a set screw, so you have a, you can limit your trigger pull to a certain degree. And with these pistols, you have a multi-tool. The bigger pistol, like 44 Magnums, have a bigger multi-tool like this 357s have a smaller one um, with this multi-tool uh, you can with this end right here you can adjust um, you can take out this front sight right here and put one of the other sights on it because it's got a little place for your uh, allen wrench to go in and that was kind of like a little allen wrench right here to go in here to take out the front sight and also adjust your rear sight with the multi-tool and also take off the handle uh, pistol grip with the multi-tool and take off the barrel with the multi-tool so it's very functional. Uh, to take off the barrel, it's very simple. You can look at my other videos on the Dan Wessons. They're all pretty much the same. Um, this lug right here has got these uh, indentions in it right here and uh, this tool goes into that and turns that on the locking lug okay so we just stick this in here and rotate it if you lubricate these lugs in the barrel they're very easy to uh, unscrew by hand too And see that's what your lug looks like right there. That's what holds this shroud on. The shroud is hollow. Don't turn the pistol upside down. The shroud will fall off on the floor. So the shroud is loose now and you just pull the shroud away and that's your barrel underneath. When you look at the shroud right here, you can see it's hollow. That locking lug catches at the top up here and pushes the, the shroud backwards against the frame. And so that's how that works.
and you have this little hole right here and that matches up with this little pin right here by my finger that keeps your shroud from rotating at all and this is your ejector rod right here and it's real easy to take the barrel off just turn the barrel You see it's a very fine thread on uh, this barrel right here. Look at that in focus. Very fine thread. So that's a good thing too. And looking at this barrel right here, let's see if we can get that in focus. Too close. Okay. So that's our barrel there. Now what we're left with here, and this is, is just part of the gun, and we can see how that looks right there. Now, if we want to take the grip off right here, it only takes a moment to do that with a multi-tool. It's an Allen wrench, basically. Let's see. You see how quick that is? So now this is all we have left. Uh, and you pull your latch down right here. And this is the Dan Weston frame. So this one here, I don't think it's really ever been shot much at all. I bet only a box of ammo's ever been through um, this particular Dan Weston right here. And this probably goes back to 83 or something like that, 84. These things are so well made, it's unreal. And usually uh, with the grips, they usually come with a combat grip too. And uh, it's just really unique uh, pistol right here. But that's what you end up with. And to reassemble just as quick, you put your grip back on here. Use your multi-tool. Again, your multi-tool is used for putting your grip on, putting your barrel on, taking uh, front sight off. Replacing it with uh, another one of your sights here, different colors, makes a difference depending on the daylight. And uh, putting your barrel back on right here. Uh, be careful um, that you don't cross thread that. And just turn your barrel until it hits the cylinder. You see this big gap right here? Most pistols have a pretty decent sized gap right there. Um, what happens is, like when you shoot your pistol, the bullet has to jump from the cylinder into the, to the barrel to a certain degree. And a lot of the power and gas is and flames uh, come out on each side and it's just flame. You can't see it in the daylight that well, but at night you can see it. So your cartridge loses a good bit of powder uh, power when that happens. And so this barrel has so many threads on it, which is a good thing. We're getting there. Okay, you see our barrel starting to come through now. 
I just screw the barrel carefully once I see it till it touches the cylinder. Okay, now I'm against the cylinder. That's too tight. The cylinder will not turn if the barrel's touching the cylinder. So I unloosen it a little bit. Then I grab my shim, and this shim right here, made by Dan Wesson, it's a six thousandths of an inch. Let me put a shim in between. I put my finger underneath it there. Between the barrel and the cylinder, which would be the barrel cone, and then I'd start tightening it up very gently okay that's that's in there that's stuck okay it's a little too tight so I undo it until this pulls out very easily just like that and I can put it back in pull it back out that's six thousandths of an inch so you can you can't hardly really see the the gap there other pistols are going to have a noticeable gap and you're going to lose power when you shoot your cartridges uh, some power so this is one of the unique things about the Dan Wesson so now our barrel is in the right position and let's say we had a four inch barrel let's say this was a four inch barrel right here and now we had a four inch shroud and this is really the eight inch and the eight inch barrel but that's how easy it would be to change out the the barrel do the same thing for two inch Two and a half inch, four inch, six inch, eight inch barrel. It's all the same. So now we take our locking lug right here and carefully thread that on. You do not want to cross thread anything, okay? So you pay close attention to that and take our multi tool. The 357 Magnum is a smaller one. This is for the Magnums. This is larger. And so you just tighten that lug. Keep. What I'm doing now is just wait until I feel a tension. Okay, I feel a little bit of tension now. That lug is starting to get tight. Now carefully turn that lug firmly not not a death grip not real hard but but firmly to lock that in place okay now the lug is locked this is holding the shroud pushing it against the frame here and our cylinder gap is six thousandths of an inch and now I pull back the hammer and I can freely rotate the hammer I mean, fr freely rotate the cylinder with the hammer back. So I know it's not hitting the nose cone. Now, sometimes when you shoot these, you'll feel the cylinder starting to lock up a little bit. That means that you got powder residue that's, that's beginning to accumulate between the cylinder and the nose cone, and you may have to increase your gap a little bit. Okay. So this is... Kind of some of the things that really make the uh, Dan Wesson one of the greatest pistol designs in the world. You see how easy it was to take off the grip, and they always come with beautiful grips on Dan Wesson. You see the aesthetic beauty of, and design of the Dan Wesson pistol here. Now, some of the Dan Wesson pistols are round; they don't have this steel right here. But this is a this is a one version where they do have the heavy steel. So, again, the barrel locks into the frame here. It locks here with the lug, which sometimes increases and helps with accuracy. These are some of the most accurate pistols ever made in the world. And that multi-tool here, again, you can use to change the sight color out here. It's change the sight very quickly. Adjust the rear sight on the uh, pistol as well. And... Um, Take off the barrel, change that out. And there's just a lot of different uh, things that you can do with these pistols. And of course, there's all kinds of ammo that you can get. Uh, this is Corbin right here. These are 
considered to be probably uh, the most powerful 44 Magnum cartridges that there is that I know of. And Corbin here, um, or Corbon, these right here uh, have a velocity of 1300 feet per second and FP. These are full penetration. You can shoot a rhinoceros with this thing. Um, so these are pretty wicked right here in the 44 Magnum. Now I don't know what these things cost today. This is a, this is a, an older box of Corbin right here back in '85, I think. So they can be pretty expensive. 44 Magnum uh, is a great, great pistol. You can shoot just about anything in America with that thing. And depending on what kind of bullets you're using, and you get the penetration you want. Um, it has a longer cylinder than this one. Looks pretty much the same type frame, but a longer cylinder. And that is this one right here. I did a video on this one. This is the 445 Super Mag. 445 Super Mag. And this is Dan Wesson. And you can see the writing there. And this is a muzzle brake on the 445 Super Mag. And of course your sights up here. And this is a really unique uh, pistol here. And this is a heavy one too, just like that 44 Magnum. And um, longer cylinder. The 445 Super Mag shoots the 44 Magnum and it will shoot of course the 445 Super Mag which is bigger and works the same way your release is right here you adjust the barrel down to like six thousandths of an inch to the cylinder it's got a locking lug underneath here this part right here the end of it will unscrew I got a video on that you unscrew this top piece right here take that off and you have to have a special multi-tool to get into this one I've got a custom made multi-tool that goes down in here to get, reach the uh, locking lug that's, lug that's down here where the barrel stops at and um, this is just really a beautiful pistol too of the Dan Wessons and um, I'll show you the um, The difference in the cartridge here okay just looking at these two pistols now the one we were talking about is the 44 Magnum here and the four, the 44 Magnum here will shoot the 44 special um, this one here is 44 special and it will shoot the 44 Magnum, of course, that's what it's made for. This one here is the 445 Super Mag, and the 445 Super Mag will shoot these two as well, and it'll also, of course, shoot the 445 Super Mag. So this pistol will shoot all three of these. So that's, you know, one interesting thing, but generally, if a pistol is made to shoot a particular cartridge that's the one you want to shoot uh, you can get away with shooting uh, 44 magnum with the 445 I wouldn't necessarily want to shoot the 44 special because the bullet has to jump farther to get into the barrel from the cylinder but uh, another thing too the 357 magnum will shoot a 38 special you can do that too the 454 Casal will shoot a 45 long coat Really, it's just a coat, but it's they call it long coat. So there's some versatility in some of these calibers. Uh, it may be cheaper for you to reload the 44 Magnum. That's what I would do. I know it's cheaper to load the 445. Uh, the 445, you might pay three dollars or three dollars a cartridge for those things. 
or more. A 454 Casal, you'll pay four or five dollars a cartridge, some of the ones that I've seen. But um, it can be expensive to shoot the 445s. But if you reload, and I do, and I, I reloaded those, it's a lot cheaper to do it, uh, real cheap compared to paying the price they want. So these are just spectacular pistols by Dan Wesson. And I'm just trying to give you some idea, introduction to Dan Wesson because it's, a lot of people don't know much about Dan Wesson. But great pistols, and uh, well, that gives you some, some idea of the beauty of the Dan Wesson. Thanks for watching, guys. Gary J.